Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, I'm excited about what God is doing in this season, in this time. He is a great God, and he's worthy of all the praise. Worthy in the morning, worthy in the afternoon. He's worthy in the evening. He's worthy at night. Help me say God is worthy of all the praise. Listen, I'm Pastor Chips Davis of In Season Ministries located at 1801 Port Malabar Boulevard in the beautiful city of Palm Bay, Florida, where we offer you a refreshing impartation of God's word. Listen, we are located on the campus of Peace Lutheran Church. So when you get to our address and you see Peace Lutheran Church, just simply find the particular building that God has given us favor in in this season. Amen. Let's continue on in the word. On last week, we talked from this title, How to Commit Your Life to Christ. We're going to continue on with part two of that this evening, How to Commit Your Life to Christ. And we're going to use a subtitle tonight, Who's Your Daddy? Can you shout, okay. Somebody holler, who's your daddy? For the word commit, how to commit your life to Christ. I looked up the definition. We're going to share it with you again. The definition of the word commit, to give in trust or charge. When I commit, in other words, I'm turning over my trust to someone. Can you shout okay? Since we trust in God, since we want to commit our life to Christ, then that means we need to trust Christ to do what he says he will do. Help me say he's going to do it. And therefore, we're going to put our trust or our charge in Christ. Can you shout yes, Lord? Another, another definition of the word commit means to pledge oneself to. Help me say to pledge. In other words, another definition is to bind or to obligate. When I commit, I bind myself to that. Are you listening? And this is why it's very important to understand that commitment is a powerful word. Amen? So you don't want to commit to something that is ungodly. You don't want to commit to someone that is ungodly. So you're going to have to what? Try the spirit to make sure that that spirit is of God. Amen? Say try the spirit. How do we try the spirit? Understand what the word of God says. Understand what the standards of Christendom is. Amen? Amen. And look for those attributes in the person. Not just in what they say. Watch their lifestyle. Watch their actions. Am I talking? In other words, check their history and see what is current. Don't just be so gullible in this day and time. Help me say that's never good. Another definition of the word commit simply means to entrust. I don't know about you, but when I read this word, when I read the word of God, and when I've checked it, and when I've studied, when I'm listening to history, listen, it has the ability to be the absolute word of God, and you know what? There's no error in God's word. Isn't that good to know? There are some books where you can prove them to be a lie, or you can prove that something is off. But the word of God is totally true. Say totally true. totally true. And here's what I share with people. You know, stop trying to go and study this religion and study that religion and study Buddha and study Muhammad. Listen, study the word of God because the word of God is absolute truth. Say absolute truth. And when you find out what is true, then you can see what's false automatically. Can you shout yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. So study this word. Let's get into the scripture tonight, we're moving in the book of John chapter 8, St. John chapter 8, beginning at verse 31. We're talking about how to commit your life to Christ. And our subtitle, Who's Your Daddy? Mm. Verse 31, beginning at, um, I'm going to be reading from the King James, and Pastor Bridget's going to be reading from the Living Bible John chapter 8, write these scriptures down, beginning at verse 31. Here's what the Bible says. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If ye continue in my word, then ye 
are my disciples indeed. Say if. if, if. This is Jesus talking. He's talking to the Jews that believed in the things that he was saying. He's using the word if. And God is using that same word for us today. If we continue in his word, then we are his disciples. If we continue, not just start and leave, but if we continue, help me say a lifestyle. A lifestyle. Boy, this, this is so important. This first verse, listen, if, say if. Jesus is talking to his chosen people now. He's telling his chosen people that, listen, I am not going to accept you in my kingdom when you're living like hell. And that same principle is applicable today. Say today. We've got to continue this walk in Christ. We've got to what? Start it and then continue. Say continue. This word continue is so powerful. Say continue. That means what? We need to do the right thing that God approves over and over. Not just day after day, but all through the day. Am I talking? All through the day. All through the week. All through the month. What about this? All through the year. We must continue. Say continue. continue. Not start and stop. Not come to church and just give God our hand and then go back and live a lifestyle of sin. That is not continuing. And God is not going to prove that. He is not going to approve that. Listen again. If we continue in the word, then ye are the disciples of Christ. Help me say continue. Verse 32, Jesus is speaking. He says, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. Can you shout yes Lord? yes, Lord? Help me say the truth. the truth. The absolute truth according to the standard of God, who is our maker and our creator. Are you listening? Now, just because there's an adversary in this realm called the devil, the devil is a liar. Help me say a liar. But God is truth. So we must choose a side. How do we choose a side? By our actions. Not necessarily our words, but our what? Actions. Listen, your actions will always follow your beliefs. You can say one thing, but when your actions show, then that means it will let everybody know which side you are really on. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Verse 33, the Bible continues. They answered him. We are Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How saith thou ye shall be, what, made free? They're asking the question. Talking about there on the who? Abraham's seed. Pastor Bridget, if you would, verse 33 from the Living Bible. Read, dear. But we are descendants of Abraham. Descendants of Abraham. They said. That's what they said. And have never been slaves to any man on earth. Do you mean set free? They're asking Jesus a question. Help us say it's a good question. But how many know that when you ask Jesus a good question, he has a what? A great answer. Amen. Here's what Jesus answered them. Help me say he answered them. Yes. Verse 34. Verily, verily, I say unto you, watch this, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Pastor Bridget, if you would, verse 34, read there. Jesus replied. He replied. You are slaves of sin, every one of you. Help me say if I'm a slave to sin then I am not a slave to Christ. Right. It's one or the other. I don't care who your biological daddy is. I don't care who your what biological mama is. I don't care who your biological re uh, relatives are. If you are a slave to sin, then that's who your daddy is. Amen. Amen. Woo. 
if you are a slave to righteousness, then God is our father. Yeah. Can you shout, I'm getting ready to learn something. Say it, I'm getting ready to learn something. Jesus goes on, verse 35. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. Verse 35, Pastor Bridget from the Living Bible. Listen at this word. And slaves don't have rights, but the son has every right there is. Help me say, Jesus, Jesus. the son of God. Help me say he is at, he has what every right, say every right. every right. Now you know what he wants us to be? Help me say a joint heir with him, amen? In other words, I am not what? The, the spiritual son, but help me say I can be a joint heir. Meaning when I am a joint heir with Christ, therefore it entitles me to the benefits of the son. Can you shout yes, Lord? Yes. We need to be spiritual joint heirs with Christ, but we must understand that it has to be a lifestyle change. Help me say it has to be. Has to be. In other words, all things in my life has to become new when I am what? A joint heir with Christ. Ask me why. Because Christ is 100% truth. And when we follow in the realm of Christ, we must follow in truth and not a lie. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. Jesus goes on, verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Help me say, if. if. Say it again, if. Please, please understand, look up this word if. It's a contingency. It, it's what? It, it, it has a choice that you must follow in order for the if to what? Take precedent. Because it's either one or the other. The if, the word if is not an absolute word. Amen? Because it's contingent upon our actions. Can you shout, yes, Lord? So even Jesus, the son, listen, Jesus is God. He's able to do everything, but he's letting the Jews know that you cannot be a partner with me, meaning Christ, if you choose to live like the devil. You can't. Say you can't. And Jesus is letting the Jews know, and he's also letting us know today. We've got to choose a side. Help me say choose a side. It's either light or darkness. It's either heaven or hell. It's either right or wrong. And who makes the choice? We do. What Christ does is he gives us the word. Are you listening? But how about this? Even in the giving of the word, we have a choice either to accept the word or reject it. We have a choice to either what? Live the truth or... Or try and lie our way into heaven. But help me say no liars. Are going to be able to stand in the eyesight of God. Amen. God is absolute truth. And that's what he's looking for in us. Say absolute truth. Can you shout yes Lord. Once again verse 36. If the son. Talking about Jesus himself. Therefore shall make you free. Ye shall be free indeed. I like the word make. Say make. make. When I think about make, I, I, I'm thinking about make over. Help me say make over. Because why? We were born in sin. And therefore sin, what? Equals death. So Christ is able to what? Make us over again. Help me say yes, Lord. Don't, don't let the devil think that we are all right without Christ. Help me say, oh no. Ah, we were what? Born in sin and what? Shaped in iniquity. So we need to what? Be made over. Help me say, Christ can do that. Somebody holler, thank God for the blood. The blood of Jesus. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Help me say, the blood of Jesus is able to make us free. 
Now, once the blood of Jesus makes us free, we still have to choose to stay in that realm. Yes. Can you shout, yes Lord? yes, Lord? Because many of us have what? Got into the realm of being free and then went back into a sinful lifestyle. Help me say that's never good. And it is never approved by Jesus. Can you shout yes Lord? Verse 37. Here's what Jesus says. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. <laughs> but. Say but. but. That's another one of those words. But ye seek to kill me. Because my word hath no place in you. Say oh my. Jesus said, I know who you are. <laughs> I made you. <laughs> Jesus said, I know who you are. But yet you choose to kill the one that's bringing the truth. Ah. Help me say that makes no sense. no sense. Say it again, that makes no sense. no sense. If you are a follower of Christ, why do you choose to crucify him over and over and over again by your lifestyle choices, which is not in line with Jesus? Amen. Can you shout, yes, yes, Lord? The Bible says, what well, choose ye this day? Whom you will serve. Help me say make a choice. Say it again. Make a choice. We choose by our actions. Not by our words many times. Because our words can lie. How many times have you ever said something. And even when you were saying it. Your heart was saying. Now you know you're lying. Amen. Hello. Some of y'all don't want to raise your hand. You lying. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Listen. Just because it's coming out your mouth, that doesn't make it the truth. Amen? Help me say, for with the heart, man believeth unto what? Righteousness. Help me say, the heart first, and then the mouth. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Help me say, the heart has to be at first. We've got to get this heart right. Amen? We got to get Christ pumping through our heart. We've got to get truth pumping through our heart. And then as our mouth speak it, then our lifestyle will what? Back it up. Can you shout? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Once again, Jesus says, I know, verse 37, ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. Verse 38, I speak. That which I have seen with my father. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Say, mm. Jesus speaks what he has seen with his father. But these Jews were speaking of what they saw with their father. Help me say two different fathers. Say it again, two different fathers. Pastor Bridget, if you would, start with verse 37. Read, dear, from the Living Bible. Yes, I realize that you are descendants of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And yet, some of you are trying to kill me because my message does not find a home within your hearts. I am telling you what I saw when I was with my father. Yes. But you are following the advice of your father. Help me say two different fathers. Let's go deeper. Verse 39, the Bible said, they answered and said unto him. Y'all ready for this? Abraham is our father. <laughs> Jesus said unto them, listen, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Pastor Bridget, if you would, verse 39 from the Living Bible. Listen at this word. Our father is Abraham, they declared. Uh-huh. No, Jesus replied, for if he were, you would follow his good example. Help me say, Jesus is saying, just because you call somebody your father, if you're not living like that father, then you just lied. Help me say there's a lot of liars in the church. 
talk about they're Christians, talk about they living a God, listen, help me say liars. There's a lot of folk in the world, amen? They're living the damnable life, but yet you can't tell them they're not a Christian. You can't tell them that they're not on their way to hell, hello? And their life and their lifestyle, the word of God has already said that these are sinful things that they're doing, but yet they still want to do them and their mouth is saying, I'm a Christian. Help me say, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Say it again, who's your daddy? who's your daddy? What Jesus is saying, I'm talking and I'm living with the king of kings. In other words, my father is God the father, but he's letting the Jews know that your father is a liar. Say a liar. liar. Let's go deeper. Verse 42. Mm. Here's verse 41. The Bible says, ye do the deeds of your father. Watch this. Then say they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. That's what the Jews are saying. Help us say we have one father, even God. Verse 42, Jesus says, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Pastor Bridget, if you would, verse 41 and 42, read dear. No, you are obeying your real father. Let me say your real father. Your real father. Read dear. When you act that way, they reply, we were not born out of wedlock. Mm. Our true father is God himself. Read there. Jesus told them. What did Jesus say? If that were so, then you would love me. Mm. For I have come to you from God. I am not here on my own. But he sent me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Your, words your words are meaningless. Are meaningless. When your lifestyle show something totally the opposite. Amen? Listen, I had to come to grips with my lifestyle. I talked about it last week. I'm telling you again. I had a lying spirit. I had to come to grips with that. Listen, I lied so much that I started believing my lies. But they were still what? Lies. Amen? I had to come to the realization that even though I was saying that I love Christ, even though I was going to church, that did not make me a Christian because my lifestyle was saying just the opposite. My lifestyle choices was doing just the opposite. Are you listening? Jesus is saying, if God is your father, then you will what? Adopt the mannerisms of your father, God. Yes. Doing what's right. Walking in the light. And say and. This is very important. And. Let me say it again. Listen. This is important. Listen. And accepting Jesus Christ for who he really is. My God. My God. My God. See, there's a lot of religions out there that believe that they're going to get to Jehovah God and they're trying to bypass and belittle Jesus Christ the Son. Jesus Christ is letting you know that he was with the Father from the beginning. Yes, yes. Yes, he was. And if you cannot accept him, meaning Jesus, don't even think that you're getting into heaven. Heaven say it's not going to happen. Jesus was letting the Jews know. Jesus is letting us know that he is the one that you got to go through. Woo! Can you shout yes, Lord? Yes, Lord? Help me say Jesus is the one. Jesus. Say it again, Jesus is the one. We've got to accept him as being God. We've got to accept him as being right there next to God through the whole process. Can you shout yes Lord? yes, Lord? And if we do that, then we will change fathers. Help me say change fathers. Change fathers. What do I mean by changing fathers? In other words, our father will no longer be sin and damnation. 
but now our father will be life eternal forevermore with Jesus. Can you shout yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. Some, somebody holler, who's your daddy? daddy. Say it again, who's your daddy? your daddy? Continue on. Here's what the Bible says. I want, I want to say this again, verse 42, I'm going to read it. And Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me. Mm. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Do you love yes. Jesus? Yes. Do you love him enough to do what's right? Yes. Do you love him enough to do what's right when it's just you? Yes. yes. And nobody's around. Y'all better hear yes. what I'm saying. See, a lot of us like to parade in the light. Hello? But in the darkness. Help me say in the darkness. Can you still love him enough to do what's right? Oh, yes. Amen? Yes. Can you shout, I understand? Jesus said what? If God were your father, you would love me. For I, meaning Jesus, proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I myself, but he sent me. <laughs> Help me say, Jesus is saying that God the Father sent him. He's on a mission from God the Father. Who sent you? Who's your daddy? Wow. Who are you listening to? Mm -hmm. Who are you following? Jesus is saying, I follow God Almighty. Yes. And he is my father. Yes. Yes. Can you shout, yes Lord. yes, Lord? Can you shout, thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Verse 43. Why do ye not understand my speech? Mm. Even because ye cannot hear my word. Pastor Bridget, verse 43 from the Living Bible. Read, dear. Why can't you understand what I am saying? Mm. It is because you are prevented from doing so. Look at the neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Satan, Satan is a blocker. He's a blocker. He wants to block the truth from coming in your life. He wants you to think that you are right when you know you're wrong. Are you listening? He wants you to think that God will understand when this word clearly says that God will not understand. Amen? He wants you to say, I'm on my way to heaven anyhow when you know that your father is the devil who is a liar. Amen? Yes. And say and. and. He wants you to believe that if you lie long enough, that the lie can become the truth. Yes. Help me say, a lie, a lie can never be the truth. Be the truth. And a truth can what? Never be a lie. Somebody holler, choose, choose a side. Choose say it again, choose a side. Choose a side. Ooh. Verse 44, 4, verse 44 Here's what the Bible says. Ye are of your father, the devil. Let me say, who's your daddy? You know, it's really something when Jesus tell us that we are of our father, the devil. Help me say, that hurts. Who Say it again, that hurts. Listen, it's, it's going to be a dangerous time when we stand before a just God. And he's going to tell us what? Depart from me. But God, I preached in your name. Depart from me. But God, I what? Prophesied in your name. Depart from me. But God, but God. Uh, say, uh-uh. Your excuses are not going to be able to stand in judgment. Amen? You've got to get it right. Say, get it right. Say it again. Get it right. You've got to choose the, this day whom you serve. Help me say, get it right. Listen, you, you got you to understand that many of us are seeking popularity. Say popularity. We are become man pleasers and women pleasers. Are you listening? Instead of trying to please God. We're trying to be on the side that everybody wants to call our name. Are you listening? Everybody wants to chant to us and say you're doing a great job. But we must get to the truth. Say the truth. The truth is... Is God pleased with my works? 
Is God pleased with my lifestyle? Does the word of God line up with everything that I'm doing? If the word of God does not line up with it, that means that we are living a lie and that the devil is really our father. Say ouch. And if we remain in that state, I don't care how often you come to church. If you remain in a dark state, how many know that darkness can come into the church? Hello? But listen, darkness can come in, but we don't want darkness to what? Stay in. Yeah. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. I need you to understand, there are a lot of dark churches in this world. They just have allowed sin to come in, sin. And it's okay for the sinners to come in. But they need to hear the word and say and. Change their lifestyle. That's right. That's right. If not, this is just what? A dead place with the name of a church on the outside. Right. Can you shout yes Lord? yes, Lord? Jesus is saying he came that what he, we might have life. Say life. And we've got to make the positive changes so we'll know who our true father is. Amen. 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 Once again, verse 44. Ye are of your father, the Lord. devil, yes, and the lust of your father ye will do. Who? Jesus goes on. He was a murderer from the beginning. He abode not in truth. Because there is no truth in him. Wow. Can you imagine serving someone that there's no truth? Every time he speaks, it's a lie. My God. Everything he says, it's a lie. Jesus. Ooh, that's scary. Help me say that's scary. that's scary. But that's where many of us have spent the majority of our life in a what? A sinful situation because we were born in it. We were raised in it. Are you listening? And even though we've come to church a few times, we have gotten settled in our what? Our bad lifestyle. And we're thinking that just because mama understands, just because daddy understands, just because friends understand, that God's going to understand. But God's saying it was what? Damnable from the beginning and it's still damnable now and until you change it, God has not approved it. I don't care who is approving it now. God has not approved it. Help me say, oh my. The devil was a murderer from the beginning. He abode not in truth because there is no truth in him. Jesus said, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of, of what? His own. For he is a liar and the what? Father of it. Whew. Say, oh my. Listen, it's only one of two sides you can be on. Either truth or a lie. Amen? There's no, there's no middle ground here. Either truth or a lie. Help me say choose the side. And stop trying to make a lie the truth. I don't care who is going along with you. I don't care who is believing you. God is saying if the Bible has called it a lie. It's a lie. Yeah. Amen? Amen. We've got to choose light over darkness. And it's hard to choose light when you've lived, when you've lived so many years in darkness. And you've made excuse after excuse after excuse for your darkness. And God says he has never accepted your darkness. But you have become comfortable in what? Your darkness. And God is saying, your father is dark. Your father is what? The devil. And that is not going to equate to heaven in the end. You've got to what? Come out. Say come out. You've got to choose 
what? Light over darkness. Jesus is very clear. Pastor Bridget, if you would, verse 44 from the Living Bible. Listen at this. For you are the children of your father, the devil. Stop. Children of your father, the devil. Is Pastor Chip saying this? No. Who's saying it? Jesus. Jesus is saying it. You are the children of your father, the devil. Continue reading. And, and you love to do the evil things he does. Ooh, boy, this sounds like my life for a long time. I enjoyed doing the evil thing. I didn't call it evil, but it was evil. See, see how the devil will make you lie? <laughs> Hello? Bad habits. Say bad habits. bad habits. You know that they are ungodly habits. But don't, after a while, your body starts calling for them. Amen? And you start responding to that call. But help me say it's still bad. It's still, bad. It's still, wrong. It's still wrong. God never approves. But you've done it so long that it becomes habit. My God. The smoking, the drinking, the getting high, the hoeing around. It has become so habit to you. Hello? Until you think that God approved it. Help me say he never approved it. Never. He never did. He never will. No. You got to change. Say change. Change. You don't change because mama wants you to change. You don't change because father wants you to change. You don't change because husband or wife want you to change. You change because God said if you don't, hell will be your home. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Somebody, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Your daddy the devil is telling you it's all right. Ha. But God the father is saying it's not all right. You got to make a choice. But look, I've been this way for so long. You know, I've been living this way for years and years. It doesn't matter. Say it doesn't matter. It does matter. God is saying, come out now. I'm giving you a chance to what? Come out now. If you don't take this chance, then hell will be your home. Whose fault is it? God's? Help me say it's mine. When you hear the word, when you find yourself, and listen, trust me, I want you to hear this. I've talked about it before. Reprobate mind. Reprobate mind is when the true word of God comes and it doesn't affect you. You're saying, I'm going to be the way I am and I'm not going to change. Homosexuality, ungodly. Lesbianism, ungodly. God will not approve it. He has never approved it. Whoo! Believe it's Genesis chapter 9, 19. Genesis chapter 19, when it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. You better read it. You better see what happened. Men. They, there was men that was married, and they hadn't even touched their wives. Their wives were still virgin. There were men, husbands. All they wanted was other men. Angels came there. All they, they, they were trying to tear the door down to get to the men. Heaven said, that's, that's, that's an evil spirit. Ooh, if that's a part of your life, Jesus Christ can change you, but you must what? Repent and what? Change the lifestyle. It doesn't matter how it started. Could be somebody messed with you, somebody molested you. It doesn't matter. Help me say it doesn't matter. It don't matter. God can what? Change. Help me say God is bigger than your circumstance. Yes. He can change you. Doesn't even matter if you're married to a woman. You're a woman and you're married to a woman. You're a man and you're married to a man. God saying that that is ungodly. He would not accept that. You got to change it. Help me say, come out of it. I see a lot of our gay couples that are married want to adopt boys. Why is that? Think about it. Why is that? Huh? And now the boy is confused. Are you listening? The little boys they're adopting are, are what? Confused. Because all they see is what? Man and man. Help me say that. That's ungodly. When, when you think about it, it's just, ugh. But this is what the Bible talks about when it got to a point where every desire of man was wicked. Continually. God is saying he's giving us time to understand that Jesus has set the standard of godliness and say and. It's going to take a change of what we're used to in our life. What we're used to in our lifestyle because many years we have spent in this sinful lifestyle. 
and we have gotten accustomed to it. But God said it's time to come out. Say come out. This is why the Jews could not accept Jesus, many of them, because what? It was something different from what they were used to. Century after century, decade after decade, generation after generation. Even if it's generational curse, it is still wrong if it's against the word of God. Amen. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. For you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning and a hater of truth. Say, oh my. oh my. Pastor Bridget, continue reading. There is not. There is not an iota of truth in him. Wow. Read there. When he lies, it is perfectly normal. Perfectly number. For normal. he is the father of liars. Let me say perfectly normal. Perfectly normal. I've lived that way. Where I lied and it just felt so normal to me just to tell a lie. Ooh, I could tell a lie so quick and you could look at me and you couldn't even tell in my face that I was lying. And folk just believed it and I went on and I thought that was right. Are you listening? Amen. Help me say that's the devil. The devil is perfect in lying. Amen. Amen. Because there is no truth. Help me say no truth, no truth. in him. If you choose to walk away from Christ, you are entering in a realm of 100% lies. This is why people talk, stop me from time to time. Pastor Bridget, I mean, excuse me, Pastor Chip, I'm coming to church. I'm going to be to church Sunday. And you know what? They don't come. See them again. Pastor Chip, I'm going to be in church. Guess what? They don't come. I already know who their father is. Now, do I have to trust that word? Here's what I say. I'll wait and see. <laughs> Amen. Amen? And that's why many times you don't, you don't really get an answer out of me. When, when sometimes you uh, I'll see you Sunday. I say, well, we'll, we'll, believe, we'll believe God. Amen? <laughs> Hello? Because you get tired of the lies. Amen? And it's like that people want man's approval. Help me say we need God's approval. Need God's approval. Say it again. I need God's approval. I, need God's approval. I want God to approve my life and my lifestyle. Can you shout yes Lord? yes, Lord? Verse 45, here's what Jesus says. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Verse 46. Which of you convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? Pastor Bridget, verses 45 and 46 from the Living Bible. Listen at this. And so, and when so. I tell you the truth, uh -huh. you just naturally don't believe it. Stop. Listen, if, if you have a, a bold in a lying situation pretty much all your life, it's hard to, for somebody to come and tell you something different and you believe it right away. Are you listening? That's what Jesus is saying. We have been a what? A part of our father, the devil. And if we have not accepted Christ, watch this. And we haven't changed our lifestyle, then we're still under what? The curse of sin. And it's hard to believe the truth when you what? Living in a sinful way. Can you say, oh my. Pastor Bridget, verse 46, read there. Which of you can truthfully accuse me of one single sin. Wow. No one. Say no one. No one. Continue reading. And since I am telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? No one at any time was and is able of accusing Jesus of any sin. Help me say 100% perfect. But yet many of us don't believe his words. He's letting us know, for the wages of sin is death. We don't believe his words. Help me say, I don't believe it. And this is what Satan is doing. He's telling us, don't worry about it. God going to understand. Here's what the once saved, always saved tell you. Come and accept Jesus Christ. You can live any kind of way you want to. Because it's all been covered by his blood. That's a lie. 
Help me say that's a lie. You, Jesus is saying, Jesus himself is saying, you have a father who's the devil. In order for you to be like him, to be like Christ, you're going to have to change to what? God the Father. Amen? Amen. Heaven said there's got to be a change. If any man be in Christ, how many times have I said it? He's a what? A new creature. Old things are what? Passed away. And behold, all. And behold, and behold what? All things are become new. In other words, my lifestyle has to change. My habits that were ungodly have to change. Even if my spouse approves it, it still needs to change. Even what? If I know it and nobody else knows it, God knows it, it has to change. Amen? It has to what? Change. Psalm 15, ask the question, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that has clean hands. Help me say clean hands. In other words, in other words, our hands cannot participate in ungodliness. Help me say clean hands. Can you shout yes, Lord? Y'all don't believe it. I got to go there. I got to go there. Psalm 15. Got to go there. Got to go there. Beginning at verse 1. Let me just read it the way God, the word says. Lord, Psalm 15 verse 1. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Two questions. There's an answer. Verse 2. He that walketh uprightly. Help me say walk. Your, your, your very steps have to be what? Upright steps. The, the, the places that you're going, that you're going, they have to be God approved. Help me say, this is the type of people that's going to abide in God's tabernacle. This, this is the type of people that choose to what? Walk in the righteous path. Can you shout yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. He that walketh uprightly, watch this, work, work. He that worketh righteousness. He that worketh righteousness. In other words, what types of works are you doing with your life and your lifestyle? You've got to work righteously. And say and. You've got to speak the truth in your heart. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Yes, yes, Lord. Can you shout, thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Pastor Bridget, if you would, verse, verse 1 and 2 from the Living Bible. Read, read there. Psalm 15. Lord, mm -hmm. who may go and find refuge and shelter in your tabernacle up on your holy hill? Who can come in the presence of God and stay there? Mm, Y'all yeah. better hear this. Who's able to do that? Continue reading. Anyone who leads a blameless life. Stop. Not a blameless choice, but a blameless life. Mm. Help me say my lifestyle has to change. My lifestyle has to change. Say it again. My lifestyle has to change. My choices have to be a place that the choices that I make, God will approve it. I approve this choice. I approve that one. I approve it. I approve it. Approve. 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 Say blameless. A blameless life. Read there. And what? And is truly sincere. Truly. Say truly. Truly. Sincere. Listen, that requires change. That requires what? Change. change. Can you shout yes, Lord? yes, Lord? Let's go back to John chapter 8. I had, to, I had to put that in your spirit. See, some folks said, oh, it's all right. Your lifestyle, all right. Whatever you do, keep on hoeing around. No, no. Help me say no. 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 Say it again. No. Keep on lying. No. Ooh, no. Help me say no. no. God is looking for what? Truth. Amen. He's looking for our life and our lifestyles to change. Verse 47. The Bible says, 
Jesus is saying, he says, he that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. Verse 47, John chapter 8, Pastor Bridget Living Bible. Anyone whose father is God listens gladly to the words of God. Amen. Since you don't, since you don't, it proves you aren't his children. Wow. If you don't listen, if you don't listen to the words of God, if you're not listening, if you're not changing your life and your lifestyle to please God, Jesus is saying you are not one of God's children. Say, oh my. That's the danger zone. Say danger zone. Now the devil will say, you are right. The devil will say that Pastor Chips is crazy. The devil will tell you that Pastor Chips don't know what he's talking about. When we are simply reading God's word, aren't we reading it? Line by line, precept upon precept, we're explaining it, but the devil is saying, you are right. You are right. Just keep on doing what you're doing. It's going to be okay. Don't worry. You're going to have plenty of time after a while to get it right. Help me say, that's a lie. Say it again, that's a lie. I'm going to seal it now. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36. Ezekiel, chapter 36, beginning at verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 36 beginning at verse 26 here's what the Bible says a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you can you all thank you Jesus and say and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and say and, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Pastor read it if you would verse 26 Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26 living Bible read dear. And I will give you a new heart. I will give you new and right desires. Mm. And put a new spirit within you. Read there. I will take out your stony hearts of sin and give you new hearts of love. Does that sound like some changes that are being made? Yeah. That, that sounds like some changes, right? Yeah. If any man be in Christ, he's a what? New, new creature. Help me say God, God is able to take out the old and give you something new. Take out what is defective and give you purity. But he's not finished. Verse 27. Watch this. And say and. After he's done those things. Here's what verse 27 says. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Say, oh my. oh my. Pastor Bridget, verse 27 from the Living Bible. And I will put my spirit within you so that you will obey my laws and do whatever I command. The spirit of God causes us to obey God and do everything that this Bible commands. Say everything. No, some things. Everything. No, only if it, it complies with my schedule. Help me say, oh no. Everything. Say it again. Everything. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? You need to answer these questions. Has God put a new heart in me? Has he given me the right desires? Not the things that I'm used to. 
Not the things that I've been exposed to. But is it right in the eyesight of God? <sighs> Some of us are doing things incognito, behind closed doors. Listen, God made the door. And he can bust through it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Matter of fact, when you get on the other side of the door, he's already there. Amen. No place you can hide. Amen. Why come to church and still go to hell? Amen. Just go on out there and do what you want to do. Amen? Amen. But if you come to church, come willing to change. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Why go to a doctor and then the doctor tells you something to do and you don't do it. You're going to die. Help me say you're going to die. God is saying when his word comes, find yourself truthfully. And the only way that you can find the truth is you got to change your daddy. Help me say no longer can the devil be my father. Woo, I need to change my father. My father needs to be God almighty. Amen. Help me say, and then he's going to give me a new heart. Help me say, and then he's going to put the right desires in me. Say, and then he's going to put inside of me a new spirit. Help me say, and then he's going to take out the stony heart of sin. Help me say, and then he's going to give me a new heart of love. Help me say, and then he's going to put his spirit in me. Yeah. Woo. Help me say, and then. And then I will obey his laws and what? His commandments. But until that happens, I'm going to always be looking for an excuse. Well, see, this, this is why I couldn't do it, God. I, I couldn't do it because something happened to me when I was five years old. And I never forgot. Hey, God is saying, you, you 50 now, okay? In other words, I got you through that at five years old. Hello? It was wrong, say it was wrong. It was ungodly, say it was ungodly. But I got you through it. Now give it to me and start living holy. Oh, y'all not hearing me? Me, personally, in my life, I was molested by my own brother, okay? I was molested, okay? All right? It was an ungodly situation, and it bothered me for years. Didn't tell anybody, but it was in me. But, and, I, and I asked God for years. I asked God, God, why did you allow this to happen to me? Why me? Why me? Why me? It wasn't until I was adult and married that God answered me. He said, I allowed it to happen to you so that you can tell people that you don't have to become what happened to you. You don't have to become what happened to you. If people are touching you inappropriately, you don't have to become that person. God can free you of it. God can deliver you from it. God can let you live past it. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Uh, young people, there are many things that are being done to them that they're too young to understand, that they're too young to control. But God is saying, I'm seeing it all. Yes, Lord. God is saying, I'm seeing it happen to you. Yes, Lord. And many of the people that's doing it, they will not get away. Yes. Their life is already damned. And they will not recover. That same brother that molested me. I watched him die of AIDS. God has a way. Somebody holler, vengeance is mine. Said the Lord. You better understand that God is real. And even if something has happened to you. In your dark state, God says, I am the light. Mm, Somebody holler, I need some light now. I need what? Some light. And Jesus promised us that he is the light 
of the whole world. So when I say that when you come into Christ that you are a new creature. When I say that everything that happened to you is old now. And everything in the future and the present is now new. Somebody holler, trust God. He'll bring you out of it. Say it again, trust God. I remember talking to a young lady. She said that when she was young, her mom used to give her to men to pay gambling debts. And just leave her there for hours. And the men would take advantage of her. And she struggled with this for years. She asked herself, why did my mom do this? And even as an adult, she struggled with it. But help me say, the struggle is over. Say it again, the struggle is over. God can bring you out of it. Yes, 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 yes. You don't have to keep going from bed to bed, from man to man. Listen, God's going to allow vengeance to come on who did it. And God's going to set you free. And whom the Son has set free. It's free indeed. Don't let the pains of your past punish your present and paralyze your progress. Help me say, I can make it. I can do all things through Christ. He has made me new. And I'm not going to become my past anymore. Ebasha, I am a new creature in Christ. And let me tell you, and I'll be finished. Let me tell you what happened to me as I became an adult. It caused me to protect my children because I was not protected as a child. Are you listening? Many times our circumstances that we go through will cause us to be more vigilant. Amen? More aware of what's around us. Are you listening? More aware of the people that come in our life, even if they call themselves relatives. Hello? Calling themselves uncles and aunts. Hello? In other words, we are more protective of our children so that what? What we went through, they don't have to go through. Are you listening? Can you shout yes, Lord? This is why Christ wants us in place now and stop what looking at our past and holding on to it. And it's causing us to what is causing our growth to be stunted. And it caused us to have what an excuse to stay in sin. Help me say the blood of Jesus covered it all. Say it again. The blood of Jesus covered it all. And I say to you. Listen, all of us, when God wants to use us, he's going to give us a testimony. We're going to have to go through some things. But the word of God declares many of the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord God will bring them out of them all. So God's going to give you a testimony. He's going to give you some things that you're going to have to go through and you're going to know that they're wrong But God's going to get you through it so that you can what? Encourage people that, hey, the same God that brought me out, he's able to what? Bring you out. Amen. And the reason why I I am so firm on God's word is because I've lived in a sinful state and I know that God has delivered me. And the same God that delivered me is the same God that can deliver you. So if you're searching, if you're out of the will of God, if you're contemplating suicide, if people are bothering you, you know, uh, fathers are inappropriately touching you, stepfathers are inappropriately touching you, sisters, brothers, uh, incest, all of that. God is here to bring deliverance. Help me say deliverance. He's going to give you a peace and a covering. Can you shout? Thank you, Jesus. Your life is important to God. Satan wants you to kill yourself. But help me say that's a lie. 
Jesus came that we might have life. He wants us to live. Listen, if you're in a situation that you've heard this word and you want to accept Jesus Christ, now is the time. Repeat, repeat after me, Lord. I am a sinner. I acknowledge that my father was the devil. But now I want a new father. And his name is Jesus. Jesus, come into my heart. Clean me up. Make me new. I will live for you. I will serve you. I will walk in the light for the rest of my days. Do this for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Very simple prayer. Very powerful prayer. If your heart believed it and your mouth said it. Jesus has come into your life. He has made the darkness light. Listen, there are millions of us that have testimonies of things that went wrong in our life. But we don't have to stay there. Amen? Amen. God is able to deliver us, to give us his freedom. Come to Jesus. I say to you two things. First of all, you need to get into the word of God. If you don't know where to start, start in the book of Proverbs that corresponds with the day of the month. This was the first of the month. Go to Proverbs chapter 1. Read it. Read those Proverbs every day. They're going to be a blessing to you. The second thing, find your Bible-based church that you see that the leadership is preaching the word and that's living a godly life. Join that ministry so that you can grow. And listen, I pray the rule of God and the covering over your life as new convert. Congratulations to our new converts in the body of Christ. Congratulations. Amen. I say to you these two words that I say pretty much each day. Be blessed.